Hello there folks, it is TIJ Gaming and welcome back to the Tour de France 2020 Pro Team Playthrough. Today it's time for the fourth part of Season 2 and today we start the Euro Tour, the first appearance for the TIJ Racing Team in that tour. But before we get into it, let's talk about what happened in the last episode with the Brage Cup. Well, good news, we won the Brage Cup. Valentin Madouas, the Frenchman, is turning into a very, very good signing. We have won both events so far this season with that man, Valentin Madouas. We also had three riders in the top 20. Ben Swift finishing the event, moving up eight places from his stage two standing, going up to 17th. And Dea Quintana ended up in 20th. So a big plus there. We also managed to get the polka dot jersey. Mikel Bierge managed to win that. We also won the points classification with Ben Swift and the young rider classification. So it really cannot get much better than that. Because of the win for uh, Valentin Madouas, he has moved to 19th in the individual pro cycling ranking. And because of that, we have moved up to 16th in the pro cycling rankings. Now remember, we need to finish at least 18th by the end of the season to make sure we have a place in all of the big events, including the massive one, the Tour de France, next year. So, before we get into today's event, there are two events to go through. We've got the Criterium de Dauphine, as well, of course, as the big one, the Tour de France. So we'll have to see what the damage is like. Um, see how far we move back in the standings. But if you go on to enjoy today's video, remember to leave a like. That is really appreciated. It only takes a second and it means a lot. Comment your thoughts as well at the end of the episode, how we got on. And also remember to subscribe for Tour de France content, regular Tour de France content, that is, on a Tuesday, Thursday and on a Saturday at 6pm. But we're into the Dauphine tournament now. And it is Roland, actually, who has got the uh, yellow jersey for the first three stages. But Ineos might have something to say about that now. Ineos do win the team time trial, but it's Grona Vagan who gets the yellow jersey for now. And Grona Vagan's still got that. I don't think he rides for Ineos. I don't think he does. Astana might have something to say, though, now on the mountain stage. Fuglesang wins the first mountainous stage, and he gets the yellow jersey. And I'm guessing he's going to win again. Fuglesang gets the yellow jersey. It's going to have to be a long way back for the other teams. Ineos win the last stage, but Bernal steals it off Fuglesang. On the final stage, Egan Bernal has a great win going into the all-important Tour de France. Alright, okay, shut up. As you can see, Bernal wins by 42 seconds to general classification. Roland did win the best climber classification. In the points classification, it was Ewan. And uh, Bernal won the young rider classification. So, three different teams in the top... Uh, top. Uh, well, three different teams winning the four classification, which certainly help us out. The points are spread a lot more. Um, Rodgelik and Vogelsang take control at the top of the pro cycling rankings. But Kovatkovsky and Sagan still there. Kovatkovsky, a very good climber. Sagan, a very good sprint. That'll be interesting to see for the Tour de France. But Bernal, he's slowly catching up, um, adding 93 points onto his total. As you can see, Maduas moves down to 24th. And we move down to 18th because of that. Not too bothered, but the Brage cycling lines do very well there. They're one of the teams that go above us. Good for them. And uh, now it is time for the big one, the Tour de France. But I'm going to uh, skip the first few stages and come back to you sort of three quarters in. And we'll see what, uh, what it's looking like. Four different men have had the yellow jersey so far, but it looks like these next three stages, the mountainous stages, are going to be absolutely crucial. It's Bernal who has control at the moment. But if you remember last year's Tour de France, it all swung quite late with Pino being the shock winner. Bernal, though, still got it. This three, these three stages are going to be massively important. And Ineos started off well with a mountainous stage win. With Bernal, he holds the yellow jersey for now. If he wins these three stages or does well, then there's no way back for the others, I don't think. Oh, well, Quintana! Daya's brother now has the yellow jersey. Did Bernal blow up? Perhaps. Quintana leads the Tour de France. It's going to be another shock winner, it looks like. Quintana still has it. Bernal had it for such a long time. And given his mountainous qualities, I'd have thought he'd have done it. But it doesn't look like it. Quintana. Nairo Quintana is the Tour de France winner. Well, isn't that fascinating? Two shock winners in two years. Fuglesang not there at all this year. Grant Thomas had a lead for a few stages, but a real shock there. Real shock. So let's see what the final standings look like. So, Bernal was second. Only 12 seconds off his uh, fellow countryman. Pino, again, two podiums in two years. I think Rodgelick and Fuglesang were both disappointed outside the top three. Mess climate classification. Martin wins that. Ewan wins the points classification. Young Rider classification goes to Bernal. Very interesting. So, this is how it looks going into the final few events of the season. Bernal has uh, massively increased his ranking. But Quintana 
becomes a player as well, up in seventh. But let's be honest, really, that uh, pro cycling ranking victory is only really down to three men now. Roglic has got a good advantage, but Bernal and Fugel sound the only real guys in it. As you can see, Maduas moves down to 37th place. And we move down to 22nd, a long way back. Christ, how are we going to recover that? How are we going to recover that gap? 150-odd points. Goodness me. Goodness me. Because if you look, yeah, Nairo Quintana won. Oh, it's a shame. We can't see what uh, ranking we need now to get on to the uh, different events. I know World Championship's top 15, but I'm not really too bothered about that. Um, but anyway, onwards and upwards to what we can do. So 30 points for a stage, 40 points for general classification, 15 points for other classification. So this is a big tournament, really. Starts for flat stage. Don't know what those other two stages are. Maybe... I don't know what they are, actually. No idea. Never seen that sort of stage before. I'm sure we'll soon find out. Um, but here we go for the Euro Tour. Um, let's alter our team before the start of the race. Now, there are seven riders in for this one. So, Maduas is definitely in the other place. Um, I think I'm quite happy with that team. Biers and Dibbon on the reserves list. Um, I'm going to take Williams out and put Biers in there. But I think apart from that, we're going to stay with that team. I'm happy with that. So, let's go. For the third event of the season, can we make it three out of three? Hi guys, welcome to the briefing for this first stage. The main thing to grasp today is that the route is flat and it harbours no particular difficulties. A sprint finish is more than likely. We've got what it takes to be in amongst it in the final sprint and finish in the top five. Have a good stage, guys. Go, go! Hello everyone. In the fields through which today's stage passes, we're the scene of many a bloody battle during the First World War. Today, the confrontation is more likely to oppose the sprinters' teams that will pull out all the stops to set up a mass sprint finish. Hello there, and welcome to stage number one of a new tournament. It is the Euro Tour. Didn't take part in this one last year, so we've got a good chance to do something in this one this year. So, three objectives for this first stage today. We will do the second stage as well today. That is a cobbled stage. That's what that sign means. But there are three different objectives today. We are to be part of today's breakaway with Big Urge. That's who we're riding with at the moment. To finish in the top 25 of the stage with McClay and also to finish in the top 20 with Ben Swift. There is a real belief that we can actually do something with Ben Swift in today's stage. Um, as heard, there's definitely a chance for us finishing in the top five. So as long as we stay cosy inside the peloton, I wouldn't expect the breakaway to go all the way. But I think the idea for Big Urge to be in the breakaway is to A, get some points for us. In the, uh, the points classification, the sprinters' standings, and also to be able to get some points in the best climber classification. It's a decent gap back to the peloton, actually. This breakaway might just work. Might just get away. Peloton's not really too bothered. We've got Van Mark and De Vinter in there, and Vandenberg coming as well. So, we're just going to tell our six riders to chill out, ensure a minimum tempo. Um, and yeah, just that should be fine like that, to be honest. But not many highlights in today's stage, being a flat stage as expected. I do worry a little bit about that time trial at the end of the at the end of the tournament because, as you know, time trials aren't exactly my uh, my best my best asset. But it looks like the Pelinton's nearly a minute behind here. We might have to put in a bit of pace to catch up to the two ahead. But not really many highlights. The fourth class climb, the only climb of the day, is coming up fairly soon. So I'll show you guys that. But apart from that. Just the two milestones after that. Just the two sprints. Here we are then for the first climb of today's... Well, it's the only climb, isn't it? But uh, the first climb of today's tour. The Euro Tour. And we're three kilometres away. Fairly easy climb. We're just going to follow Vandenberg up here. As you can see, Vandenberg has had the uh, majority of the relay so far. But everybody chipping in, which is fair enough. Should be able to win this climb. Didn't hear anybody's name that's uh, particularly strong. At mountainous stages. And at these climbs. And as you know, Björge is a pretty decent mountain climber. A few attempts at a breakaway in the peloton. But uh, the peloton is about a minute back. So we should be okay. Certainly be able to get uh, a chance to get some points here. Just a singular point on offer. But a bit lot, lot, bleh, 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 put my teeth back in. Much like in the Braish Cup. It is a chance for Mikel Björge to have the uh, polka dot jersey going into the second stage. Just put in a bit of pace. Again, no real risk of having a problem. Just put in a bit more pace. 
Just make sure we get this point. Van Mark's looking pretty racy. And it's Van Mark who gets it. Well, caught napping a little bit there. Caught napping a little. And I know that uh, last episode I saw some comments um, on what should be on the back of the Tour de France merchandise. And uh, there were two quotes. And uh, one of the, what, that was one of them. I think we've been caught napping there. And, uh, well... To be honest, that, that's quite right. We we are caught napping quite a lot, but we've done quite well this season so far, haven't we, to be fair? But not quite done it there. Uh, we've missed out on that point. Again, caught napping a little bit. I'm just winding you up there. Just caught napping a little bit there. Um, but it is a long way to all that first sprint. So we'll just tell Bierge to work with his opponents, not to exert himself too much. Again, for the guys behind, ensure a minimum tempo and uh, just control the pace for the rest of the stage. So here we are for the first sprint of the day. Um, you might question why we're not on board with, board with Bierge, and this is the answer. Um, he just hasn't got the stamina up front. We have used all of his feed, as you can see. It's uh, getting rather annoying, to be honest, with Bierge. Um, he just ran out of energy. Couldn't keep up with the breakaway, and that was the problem. Um, so we're going to go with Ben Swift. Try and get a good amount of points. Obviously, we know that Bierge will get at least fifth. That will secure at least, I think, 12 points for him. Um, we'll tell all of our guys to put in a good tempo. Okay, it's not going to hurt to try and get some points here. It's not the most demanding of stages, so not much to worry about there. Just really using the energy up because why not? We've got the uh, we've got the gel. So here we go for the intermediate sprint. Looks like Bjorn's going to pick up fourth. Quite happy with that, <clears throat> and then he'll probably come back into the pallet. I would say. Yeah, everyone being told to do hundred percent on the. Uh, the relays, so hopefully that will bring him up near to the front. The head of the race is one and, a half and actually, there's Bjergen de Vries there. So there's certainly a chance to potentially do something here. Get up to maybe uh, maybe fourth place. And we know Bjergen hasn't got a lot of energy, so it's a possibility. Tell everyone in our team to attack. Just try and take points off the rest, that's the idea. Okay. And de Vries is struggling now. And I think Bjerg's as well. So a good chance to get fourth here with Ben Swift. Running out of energy quickly though. Hmm. Ah, that didn't really work, did it? That didn't really work. Well, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. Ben Swift managed to get seven points there. Ninth place. Quintana got four. Athene three. McClay two. And Holmes one. Brilliant. Most of our guys in the points there. Very satisfied with that. Very satisfied indeed. Just going to tell Bjerge to uh, follow and not overtire now. Obviously, he's knackered from making that breakaway. Not the best, really. Could have done with fourth place. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Can't do too much about it. It's not the end of the world. And, uh, again, the, the last highlight of today's stage is, ironically, the end. And that final sprint. And I'll see you guys when we get there. Providing there's not any uh, real shake-ups or shocks. So, just 10 kilometres to go now in this stage. Bunched Peloton. We knew it would be bunched. It's rather inevitable, really. And uh, there is a chance we have actually been able to prepare the sprint, but for McClay. Um, but Ben Swift is our main guy. I mean, I know that we want to finish in the top 25, McClay. But Ben Swift um, is the man that we believe we can finish in the top 5 with. So, it's worth trying to do. I'll tell you what, though. It's packed here. It's going to be tricky to get through this group, particularly if somebody makes an attack, not much of a chance really for us to do anything, so we might have to just barge our way through here to get well placed in this pack, that's better, a bit of a wider road now, just put in a bit of pace just to try and improve our position here, that's it, perfect, happy with that, I'll have to tell everyone to consume their feed, no point uh, leaving that till the last minute, same with Ben Swift, so just points on the line here. General classification doesn't really mean anything. But of course there is some points for the... Uh, the uh, the uh, hmm, yeah, pro cycling rankings if you do indeed go to win the stage. So that's important to note. We'll... Uh, uh, get in position for the sprint. Yeah, okay, that's fine. If tell everyone else to do that, we can't really do too much else. I think we'll tell uh, McClay to attack. But uh, apart from that, everyone else can just stay where they are. So we'll tell McClay to attack with about two and a half kilometres to go. 
Actually, we'll tell him to just put in a good effort in the relay now, just so he can get a lot higher up. And as you can see, some of our guys are here already, so that's a bonus. Got a good amount of energy. Just don't want to be caught napping as per usual. Ooh, Van Mark starting to struggle now. Ooh, look at McClay. Good stuff from him. Tempo 110. Well, we might as well say the same for everyone. I know we weren't going to do, but I don't think it could cause that much harm. And it just takes uh, any sprinters' points off the rest of the team, so I'm happy with that. So, Clomens to go now. Quintana's there as well. Right, let's tell McClay to attack. And let's sprint ourselves. Come on, sprint. Come on, sprint. Come on, Swift. Got a chance here. Got a good chance. Come on, son. Come on, Swifty. Yes! We win the stage. Brilliant. Great stuff. And we certainly weren't caught napping there. Certainly weren't caught napping there. Good pace in the end. Had a good gap to everyone. They did to catch up a little bit come the end of the race, but I'm not bothered about that. Great stage, and I think that uh, some of our other guys must have finished well there as well, but again, we have the green jersey with uh, Ben Swift, and of course the yellow jersey going into the second stage. That's exciting, isn't it? So there he is, the stage winner. Not going to spend too much time on this. We know who's got the classifications. Ben Swift with the yellow jersey, Ben Swift with the green jersey, Van Mark with the best climber classification, and Van de Poage with the young rider classification for the moment. Well done, lad. Congratulations to you. I hope that we'd play a leading role, but from that to win this stage, you have put in a superb performance. Well done for this win. We hit the ground running, and tomorrow we'll have the honour of defending the yellow jersey. Great stuff. McClay finished in ninth as well. We'll definitely take that. So in terms of points for the stage, Ben Swift's got 57, McClay picks up 10, Quintana 4, Feeney 3, Holmes 1. It did well. It's all important, isn't it? All crucial. So let's have a look at what that gave us in terms of points. So we're not really too fussed about this. That's going to be the same as it was. Uh, ben Swift picks up 34 points. That's quite big, actually. And as you can see already, it's starting to reduce that gap to the team in 18th, albeit it's still quite large. But we're 38 points better off than we were. Very pleased to see. So we now move on to the uh, second stage. As you can see, we met all of our goals today. Been a long while since we've done that. Very good stuff. Bier's already starting to struggle. So you might have to take a back seat in this next stage. But here we go for the second stage. And it's a cobbled stage. Let's see what it's got in store for us. Today, it's a stage with cobbled sectors. It could get edgy. Positioning on the approach to the sectors is of vital importance. Cobbled stones will make the race unpredictable. Try to defend the jersey as best you can. We've got no cobblestone specialists. It will be difficult to play a leading role, and so you'll have to concentrate on defending the jersey. Have a good stage. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. On this stage that crosses from Belgium into France, the riders will cross no less than seven cobbled sectors. Each sector a stumbling block that could upset the race scenario. Hmm, interesting stage coming today. Very long one, 218 kilometers, goodness me. Seven cobbled sectors. Don't really know what we've got in store, but we'll soon find out, I suppose. In terms of the objectives today, we want to retain the lead for the general classification with Swift. And also to be part of today's breakaway of Athene, Meduus, Quintana and Bierge. Now, Bierge we're going to keep in the uh, in the Peloton. He doesn't need another stage of uh, hard graft. So we're going to tell Quintana to end and follow any attacks. The same as Meduus. And we're going to ride with uh, Athene because actually he's the best rider for us on Cobble. As uh, you heard from the sports director there, we have no specialist on Cobblestone. Um, but Athene is our best rider. It's not by much, to be honest. He's rated at 67 on Cobblestone, compared to 65 and 64 for other riders. So, not really much of an improvement. But uh, it's the first time we actually get to ride with Athene, which is great stuff. And uh, I'm excited for this. He's actually one of the better riders in our team on paper. So I'll be intrigued to see how he gets on. But he's putting in a good amount of pace at the moment. Just trying to get away from the the uh, peloton. Just tell him to work with his opponents. Uh, Meduus and again Quintana follow attacks. But apart from those cobblestone sectors at the end of the race. Um, again there aren't really too many challenges. Apart from those sectors it's really just like a flat stage again. Rightio then. Time for the only climber today. As you can see the breakaway has got a bit larger. 
Quintana and Maduas, we managed to get them both in there. Athene's still there as well. And uh, a few too many in the breakaway, but that's just going to be the fun that happens. If we want Maduas and Quintana in the breakaway, then other riders are automatically going to get interested. Um, do we go with Quintana or Maduas? No, we'll go with Quintana for old time's sake. We'll try and get uh, Quintana the best climber classification at this tournament. He's certainly got the pace, we know that. Not the hardest climb in the world either, so we'll just put some pace in. In fact, we'll just try and put an attack in now. Try and uh, distance ourselves. They weren't going to put too much pace in afterwards. Looking to be a good move here. Should be comfortably ahead come the top. Yep, this looks good. Oh, I'll tell you what, though, they're coming. They're coming. I didn't anticipate for this. Come on, Quintana. I'll tell you what, it's not our day, is it, on the climbs? It's not our day at all. I'm not going to say it this time, because I know that... Uh... Oh, no, don't wait for the following group. Goodness me, no. Continue the effort. Uh, what I'm going to do is to protect Athene. We don't want him to fall back. But, uh, yeah, it's just not our day at all, is it, on the climbs? A bit frustrating, really, but, but oh well. The race is approaching the first cobbled sector of the day, 1,800 metres long. It's too far from the finish and too far away from other sectors to go on the attack. It's a sort of a warm-up for what's to come. So here's the first cobbled sector. Not controlling anything here, and apparently it's, it's too short and too far from the end for anything to really make a difference. That's it for the first cobbled sector, but it'd be interesting to see towards the end of the race what difference it makes. Um, we're going to go with Maduas for the sprint, certainly for that first sprint. He is the best out of the three riders we've got for the sprints. Although, obviously, we will attack with the other two guys. And uh, that first of two sprints is not too far away. Here we are, then, for the first sprint of the day. 20 points available here. We've been recommended not to go too quickly, because apparently it is a bit of a rise. So we could run out of energy quite quickly. Some points available in the peloton as well. And the peloton, as you can see, is uh, they're closing up. Interestingly, I'm going to uh, take a bit of a gamble here. I'm going to put in a good turn of pace with Swift. Try and catch up to the group ahead. Could really be uh, a good gamble. We'll see what the breakaway's tempo's like. I don't quite think we're going to be able to do anything here. No, it doesn't look like it, does it? Well, it was worth a try. Certainly be able to get a few points, I would say, here. But for the sake of three points, I'm not really bothered about going for it with Ben Swift. Nobody here, I don't think, uh, too bothered about the points classification. Going to get in a good position with Maduas. Uh, Athene as well. Put in a big tempo. And try and win this sprint. Here we go, then. A kilometre to go. Might as well tell Ben Swift to have his red gel. Same as everybody else. No point for the front three, though. Right, tell the two guys to attack. And we'll go with about 0.8 kilometers to go. Because apparently we shouldn't really go too early. Here we go. Depends, I suppose, how much the other guys want it. Come on, Maduas. This looks good. This looks good. 20 points. Outstanding. Quintana got 6th, Athene 5th. We'll take that. We will take that. Where's Swifty going to finish up? Oh, not much energy left, unfortunately. Hopefully he can get 2 points across the line. He does. And he really uh, loses 1 point on what he would have had, so not too fussed there. Well, that's good. Oh, we better uh, tell our guys to chill out at the front. And now they can consume their red gel. That might be a hint, actually, to consume your red gel after the sprint. So that uh, it makes things a bit more comfortable. Maduas is uh, falling back a bit, though, now. Why is that? Why is he riding like that? Very strange. I don't know why you fell back that far. That's weird. How strange. Maduas basically back in the peloton now. 
I suppose though it doesn't really matter. We've got the one mass sprint at the end. Don't really think much will change till then. A bit bizarre though. Very strange. And uh, we'll just tell them to work with their opponents up at the front. Uh, tell them to do is to continue the effort. And we might as well now go on board with Ben Swift uh, for that final sprint. But those cobblestone sectors might prove to be a bit of an issue. We'll see what they're like when we get there. Here we are then for this first cobbled sector. Not really much of a problem, I don't think. There's four guys in the breakaway. Can't see there being much of a change there. So that's the first cobbled sector done. Again, I don't think these will pose too much of an issue. Going to try and get a bit better place with Ben Swift here. Looks like the breakaway still has some gas left. There's four guys in the breakaway. They might well be able to get a gap. I can't see it though. I still think there will be a good chance uh, for the peloton to be bunched at the end. Let's see how we get on in the next section. Yeah, I don't really think there's much of an issue, to be honest. There's only two guys now in the breakaway. I can't see those guys particularly doing anything. Again, that's now down to one. Goodness me, look at uh, the energy levels of our guys. We should tell them to ensure a minimum tempo. We don't want to be... Uh, don't want to be struggling towards the end. Biergi starting to struggle here. And Holmes, that's amazing. Hmm, interesting. We'll try and manage that, and uh, I'll see you guys towards the end of the stage. We are really struggling here for energy, you know. Amazing. Look at Quintana, even. I mean, this is amazing. I didn't think it would make much, miss much of a difference. This is uh, quite staggering, but there's nothing we can do about it. I guess we can use our feed. But uh, it just seems so much of a risk. Hmm. I mean, everybody's got to be struggling with this. If some of our top riders, the likes of Meduas, Quintana, are struggling, then it, it makes you wonder a bit. We'll get those two guys to take their gel, same as uh, Bjerg and Holmes. But this is puzzling. It really is. I mean, the peloton is bunching back up at different vari variables. As you can see, there's 26 riders at the front. And uh, that might well be it, you know. So the last cobbled sector coming up. Actually, there's one more after this. I, I, mm, I, I could be wrong. But I think the peloton will just uh, bunch up again after this. There's a group of 12, though, and that's a little bit worrying that... Uh, I mean, how many more are there to go after this? There's one, one to go after this. Tell Ben Swift to consume his blue feed. To be fair, we knew we hadn't got a cobblestone specialist. It's just one of those sections left. Try and get through that hurt and then uh, organise ourselves. Jesus Christ. I didn't realise how far some of them had fell back. I mean, Bjerg and Holmes sod them, to be quite honest. Huh. But uh, Athene and Quintana that far back. That's a real shock. It's time to stick to the wheels in front. Same as Meduas. Same as Swift. And this could really put... Uh, our Euro Tour in some jeopardy. But we just haven't got a cobblestone specialist, so it's very rare these stages come up. We've just got to live with it, unfortunately. Not much we can do. There's only a group of 12, though, at the front, so I think they'll be caught by the end. Could be wrong, but uh, I think they will be. There's one more section of this to go. So after this horrible section, we've only got Ben Swift in the palace, and that's amazing, really. Well, we'll ride on board with Swift uh, just momentarily. But I knew it was a risk because we haven't got any uh, any gel left. I knew that would be a risk, but we had to take it at the time. Ben Swift risks a blow up here. Is it nearly over? Oh, it is, thank goodness for that. So, 10 kilometres to go. I'll stay on board till the end of the race now, but this has been... Well, what can only be described as a bit of a disaster for us. Our worst stage in quite a while. But what could we do? You know, we took our feed. There's not much we can do, really. I was certainly wrong about it being uh, a bit like a flat stage. Huh, not quite. Peloton's bunched at the front, but we just haven't got the pace to keep up with it. We have been trumped today completely. Completely and utterly trumped. Wasn't expecting those cobble stack sections just to cause such amount of pain for us. Okay, I'll a feed. And for the first time this season, it looks like we're out of uh, this before it's even started. Certainly the general classification. 
But a lot of riders have struggled today. So it's not just us. Only 28 at the front. If we can keep this under control, we should be able to finish at least in the top 30. Which should be okay. We bend swift. The rest of the guys are struggling though. So that's 29th. I'll take that. We just need to be as close to that peloton group as we possibly can towards the end, really. But we're going to struggle, certainly. This is a kick in the teeth. We just need to be a bit more prepared for the next uh, cobble stage. But to a degree, there's not really much more we can do. What else can we do? We haven't got a rider who's good in the cobble, so we're just going to have to face the tall men that comes with that. Peloton starting to slow up though now. A few guys accelerating at the front. You've got to react straight away, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. Just tell uh, the other guys behind to try and set a good tempo now. Reduce the damage. That's all we can do. Quite staggered at how this has uh, jumped everyone, to be honest. Not much we can do. Again, we risk a blow up. I know it was a risk to use our feed, but I think if we hadn't used our feed, then all of our riders, including Swift, would have been back uh, where the other guys are. Would have been a real trouble. So a lot to learn when it comes to cobble stages. It certainly is. And there's absolutely no power we've got in this stage. And we're going to lose the yellow jersey. We'll definitely lose the green jersey, I would say, as well. It's all about damage limitation here. Well, what can we do? What can we do? You win some, you lose some. We've seen the highs today, and we've definitely seen the lows. So it's kilometres to go. We said we were aiming to finish in the top 30 here. I think we should be able to. Might as well just go for it full power. And we end up in 30th. Well, that's not too bad, but... Not great either. We're just going to finish the stage. Hope that those guys do okay. But uh, that's one part of our team that we haven't got anything in. That's Cobbles. And uh, it's been shown today. Really has. So fair enough to the winner of this stage. Obviously a good rider on the Cobbles. It's Christoph who wins the stage. And he's the rider who has the yellow jersey now. Ben Swift still has the green jersey. That's encouraging to know. And Evan Apoe has the best climber classification. But I'm guessing our sports director won't be too chuffed about that one. I don't know, but I don't think he will. We had no real ambitions for the classification of this stage. The least that can be said is, you didn't prove me wrong. We lost the yellow jersey. It really is a bad day. Oh dear. Well, it's not good, is it? Not good at all. But what can you do? What can you do sometimes? We didn't do too badly in that first sprint though, did we, to be fair? If you look at the general classification, Ben Swift now moves down to 28th place. And that has really rocked the gaps of the general classification. But, there are two classifications we can go for. The best climate classification and the points classification. That's what we can go for. We've got two chances really to get some points. As you can see, still in 22nd. And uh, I mean, to be fair, we were part of the day's breakaway, but we really struggled after that. And the next stage is going to be a tough one as well. Another cobblestone stage. So really, what we've got to do... Um, that first sprint is our only priority, really. Go do well in that first sprint. Um, and then it's really that fourth stage that we've got to take control in. Try and win all the climbs. Try and win all the sprints. Win the stage. Get all our points there. Because it's time trial, the fifth stage. And we're not that good at that either. So I think in, tom in tomorrow's episode, in Thursday's episode, we will do... Um, the final three stage because that cobblestone, well, we haven't really got anything that we can do there. We are powerless to defeat. That four stage is going to be quite interesting to see what we can do in the in the climbs. Obviously, only two points available in the climbs so far. So the fourth stage, the big one in terms of those climbs. And then, of course, we've got the final time trial. But if you enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment your thoughts as well and subscribe for regular Tour de France content on a Tuesday, Thursday and on a Saturday at 6pm. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye for now.